Okay, good morning. So, what we will do today is an important class which is hardly taught in uh, chemistry departments, uh, at least nowhere in India in chemistry department it is taught and so I insisted that this should be uh, dealt in, in very elementary form and in detail. And uh, the in, in the book, StatMac book, there I have devoted 5 chapters of 30 to 5 chapters. So, that kind of tells you how much importance I give to uh, the phase transition. As I told in the last class when we did the Mayer's theory, so Mayer's theory is one of those 5 chapters. In Mayer's theory, Mayer was the first to do a theory uh, starting from interaction. As I told you, ideal gases do not, they do not have a phase transition. Ideal gases do not become liquid, they do not become crystal, they are in uh, good reference systems, but they cannot explain the real world. The what you and me exist and the phase transition happen because of molecules and atoms interact. And one of the most dramatic consequence of the molecules interact is the phase transition. And uh, however, the understanding of phase transition is very uh, tricky because the concepts are profound and deep and many of the things that we know in uh, uh, physical chemistry and physics, chemical, even chemical kinetics, and as far field as chemical kinetics are derived from the basic idea that phase transition gave to us. For example, concept of other parameter, concept of free energy landscape, the glass transition, uh, rugged nail, all the things that we hear are multidimensional processes many of these things have their origin in this is beautiful and the very profound and fundamental field of phase transition. Okay. So, this is what we will be doing, as in though it is Landau uh, phase transition, it will be a uh, lot more. So, the main theory of this, so in 1937, uh, do you know this great uh, Big Bang uh, episode that when Penny was, uh, was Seldon was uh, teaching penny physics eh? and they want warm summer evening in Greece. <laughs> I suddenly remembered the, what I am going to say reminded me of Big Bang theory. If you have not seen that particular episode, you should see that it is really one of the most hilarious in Sheldon and uh, Penny. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, in 1937, you know much later than that uh, Greece, there are two things happened in the same year. Uh, Joseph Mayer came out with the uh, theory of condensation and which went on as I uh, mentioned in the last class, the our cluster, concept of cluster expansion leading, uh, representing um, interacting molecules as, uh, as uh, dots and lines between them which gives to graph theoretical picture of uh, physics that ultimately developed into Feynman's integrals and all these things. The, the representation of an integral in theoretical physics as the graphs started with Joseph Mayer. Then it went on to become uh, Mayer or cell cluster expansion in quantum mechanics. Okay, and of course, over the Feynman's did in uh, quantum electrodynamics, and we are talking of atoms and molecules and uh, phase transitions. The same year, 1937, uh, uh, Landau came up with a theory of phase transition, which is extremely simple and elementary but it captures very essence of many of the things that we will be talking today. But before I can do that, I will try to go through some very basics as I said because the generality of phase transition is not what a chemist usually used to see. We are used to specific properties of atoms and molecules that attract us. So, when it comes to thinking generally and general picture, this is not uh, something that is our forte. Okay, so, I will have many elementary concept basics chapters that will be there, you can just quickly read or I can read, but they will be not spending too much time on that. That is ubiquitous in late uh, nature, it is manifested in a large expanded technique. Main thing is this, that there is a micro infinitesimal change in a control parameter like temperature, pressure or which will be our outer parameter, I will talk about it later. Infinitesimal change leads to a macroscopic change or thermodynamic change. So, the, you know, remember the concept of derivative, you put, uh, you put the change of your dependent variable in the numerator and your independent variable 
in the denominator. So, so we always think of change in terms of a derivative. So, you can easily see if I have an infinitesimal change in a control parameter and I have a macroscopic thermodynamic change, uh, then that means we are talking essentially of a very peculiar phenomenon which is called singularity. See in much of the things that you read in your calculus are the ones of the functions that are called entire functions or their first or second derivatives exist. So that is how we work with them. If you have a singularity you cannot do anything. So that is the first difficulty you will have. So it is many branches of natural and biological science like you know of late we had the protein uh, folding that is completely used the language of glass transition and you know, the folding funnel or uh, Vonuchikovalinus all these things are just completely uh, come borrowed from phase transition or uh, nowadays in many of the things with genomic studies and all this again from phase transition. So, it is a discipline by its own merit with entire books devoted to phase transition like the book by uh, Eugene Stanley is on phase transition, then there is one by Balescu. There are many books just on phase transition by itself and I find people, I disdain people who do not find it interesting very frankly, this is such a beautiful subject, okay. Uh, it is a strong language but I think sometimes you need this strong language uh, at least in India. So, this is amazing, it has a different diverse types of phase transition that we encounter in nature, yet there is an amazing unity in such diversity. These are all uh, lines from my, uh, my own textbook and my own writing, okay. Among all this, there is unifying property among all the different kinds of phase transition is the nature of discontinuity. So, I can characterize a huge number of phase transitions by saying that whether it is first order or second order. As soon as I say it is a first order, then there is a huge number of phase transitions which Im immediately become a, uh, you know that there are certain characteristics which are common or universal. When I say second order phase transition, again a huge number of phase transitions can be grouped together. So, this characterization of first or second order phase transition, you know, is, is possible and that brings this. Uh, the unity in diversity that I have been talking about, okay. So, depending if this transition is categorized in different order, namely first order, second order and classification is a grouping of phenomena in similar characteristics together and a few of them large number of phase transition observed, you know. So, what it one is trying to do now, characterization and is a very powerful. For example, when it is a first order phase transition, gas liquid phase transition, liquid uh, to crystal phase transition many many other phase transitions or magnetization, magnetic phase transition in the presence of a magnetic field, electrical transition in the presence of electric field, huge number of uh, isotopic pneumatic phase transition, pneumatic smectic phase transition in liquid crystals, the huge number of things in polymer, as soon as I say it is a first order phase transition, they are all very similar. So, I know what does mean by first order phase transition. Similarly, when I say second order phase transition, the order disorder type of phase transition, gas liquid phase transition, critical point and a huge number of transitions like that which this. Now, so we started off saying the order. Now, before that I, I tell what is an order, uh, let me tell you uh, we need to know something to characterize the phase transition. This is done through a constant or order parameter. It is a physical quantity so chosen that it is 0 before the phase transition but becomes non-zero and acquires a finite value after the phase transition. That is the definition of order parameter which is selected, which is chosen. For example, if I have a gas to liquid transition, then so the canonical gas liquid will have, will see it many times pressure versus density, then this is the, so this is gas, this is liquid, this is crystal solid and this is the, the uh, so this is the coexistence. Now, the order parameter at a given temperature will be this change in density. That means density here rho L minus rho gas that will be order parameter. In a magnetic transition, it is a magnetization that will be the order parameter because that is 0 before the magnetic transition, ferromagnetic transition and uh, non-zero afterwards. So, these kind of uh, Identification is extremely important and that was the one that was uh, implemented by Landau because 
this change that I'm, I'll be seeing here is which characterize. So the whole idea is that if I want to understand how a phase transition takes place and why a phase transition takes place, this why and how will depend, uh, I, I see if I understanding is proper or not, whether I can explain this change in density. For example, typically let us say as I uh, described earlier that one of the very another unifying thing we do is we introduce rho star that is rho n by v cube of molecular diameter. The universality come because all the liquids have very narrow range of rho star. They may have very different number density like 10 to the power 22 uh, per cc then they tend to a 23 per cc. But in that when you take the molecular diameter and the number density and multiply you find they are all between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9. This is wonderful. Then most of the gases they are widely different but at the condensation typically not too quite a bit lower than critical temperature but not too uh, low. This is typically will be between 0 0.05 and 0 0.1, let us say 0 0.1. So now I suddenly have a fantastic whether carbon dioxide or methane or water, I have a fantastic or methanol, a fantastic unification when I go to the dimensionless quantity. Now as I was saying, I am just giving a number, this rho star is 0.1 and then liquid typically goes to 0.7 or 0.8. So I have to, if I understand properly, I should be able to say why gas to liquid transition density increases by factor of 7 okay and uh, what pressure it happens and I have to be able to say what are the other characteristics of the change like latent heat. So these are the kind of properties that one would like to know. The whole A starts, whole this understanding of phase transition starts with the identifying an order parameter which is as I said 0. So, if I did rho L minus rho G, so it is 0 order parameter 0 just before there, then it jumps by a large number, okay. Now, this was this is a very famous classification by Ehrenfest. Ehrenfest introduced this and this is the beginning order parameter and um, Ehrenfest classification is the beginning of the our uh, formal study of phase transition. So, Ehrenfest defined the following way. He noticed that gas liquid, liquid crystal, these two here and you know as I said uh, magnetic transition in the presence of external magnetic field all are characterized by finite change in a fast order property, fast order property means fast delivery of free energy like entropy mm. and then pressure or um, uh, other DADP you can get the density. So the fast order properties change, then he noticed that there are cases where it is a like, like, like superconductivity, it is a second order property that is changing. Uh, order disorder transition in metallic alloys, it is the second order property like this specific heat, the susceptibility, specificity is second derivative of free energy, susceptibility is second derivative with respect to volume, okay. So, sec, so there is a class of phase transitions which are characterized by uh, uh, fast discontinuity or singularity or anomaly in the first derivative of free energy and their properties which are second uh, derivative and this is suddenly you begin to say okay then there are characteristics between liquid liquid and uh, pneumatic and spectic or gas and liquid liquid well, all the same, uh, same yes they are all very similar and you will see their similarity even more they are all have the latent heat while the second order phase transition they have no latent heat. This is very important, they have no latent heat, they have a discontinuity second order property. So, so the Ehrenfest classification at one shot allowed us to classify very different kind of phase transition which apparently so different but they are uh, similar, okay. Again motivation of the questions I have said that, that uh, these I have said all the um, various phases of solid, liquid, magnetic include order disorder transition, metal insulator transition, superconductive transition, sol gel transition, liquid crystal all these things. Now one very important thing I should point out that it is a field simple intuitive arguments fail miserably. 
and this is one of the reason our uh, the theories are held so uh, so highly regarded um, and I will say how it does not work like one of the most important thing is the second order phase transition is the, is the uh, which was solved 1971 by Cage Wilson by using introduced the renovation group which is one of the most formidable thing that has been created by uh, our uh, mental things uh, many human beings our uh, intellectual feet. Now, so what we have to say I, as I say always why and how, uh, why we study I just said you and what are the main characteristics of the phenomena, why does it occur in the first place. One would like to understand both from microscopics is not here microscopics and from uh, macroscopics both from fundamental and phenological point of view. So, there are many examples I said okay, let us go through them liquid salt this is the one of the most uh, common things we see every day life and the famous paper of uh, uh, come from India of T. V. Ramakrishnan and Yusuf of Kanpur IIT that uh, uh, one of the highly cited paper is the freezing transition. The first line of that beautiful paper was that freezing is the most ubiquitous of all the phase transitions great line they started with. Then parametric ferromagnetic phase transition or the disorder phase transition, binary mixture, large change of composition, normal superfluid transition liquid helium taking to superconductivity, superfluidity, then uh, metal insulator transition again change in the resistivity, sol gel transition, helix coil transition, DNA protein folding list goes on. Uh, huh? No very good question, uh, many of them are second order like superconducting transition is second order. Superconducting is very unique, I will I'll, I'll talk of superconductive liquid. Helix coil transition is a first order phase transition. Helix coil is a first order phase transition. Protein folding is considered also first order phase transition and uh, but the change is very small. Hmm. Helix coil transition order parameter is the we use the helical pitch, yeah exactly. Exactly, and this theory, if you are interested, uh, please take a note. It was done by Zeman Bragg, the Zeman Bragg, 1959. Two pages next to each other, both one and a half page, or even less than that. And other by my advisor, uh, Gibbs and DiMarzio, and um, Julian Gibbs, and uh, this beautiful theory. The reason it becomes first and the first order is very nice. See. As we will discuss a second order phase transition particularly order disorder, gas liquid at critical point, they are characterized by large scale fluctuations and so huge density fluctuation near gas liquid transition. The compressibility goes to 0 and gas liquid transition. Order disorder transition again your uh, composition is hugely changing that uh, is the composition that is the order parameter that first order phase, uh, phase transitions are e e e characterized by that you need an inflation. That means it does not have, it is not characterized by that kind of huge phase uh, uh, fluctuations. So, this is, uh, so when helix coil transition takes place, if you want a DNA helix to be broken in, into coil, then you have to first break the three hydrogen bonds. You break the first hydrogen bond you do not get, second you break the third one then it starts rotating, you get the rotational entropy ok. So, that is the essential nucleation uh, phenomena in that ok. We will not be able to uh, understand everything today uh, in this one lecture as I told you full semester course is given on phase transition, but the idea here is to introduce the universality and the grandeur of the field and the concepts like uh, order parameter then first and second order phase transition which I said that is the first and second by the de, it is determined by the derivative of the free energy where it becomes discontinuous. Uh, that means, this is the RN plus classification the order pattern given by the first derivative of the free energy with respect to order parameter or other thing control parameter that shows discontinuity. So, in second order phase transition first or uh, derivative like density entropy they are not discontinuous but in the first order phase transition is the entropy that is what you call latent heat that is discontinued. So, heat content uh, entropy jumps and from uh, uh, crystal to liquid entropy jumps 
and entropy is the fast derivative of free energy. That is why melting, freezing or fast order phase transition. Okay. This I said this continuous change microscopic derivatives, finite change of a macroscopic variable caused by an infinitesimal change. This I said, but it is very important that infinitesimal change in a variable, but a macroscopic change in a variable is the hallmark of a phase transition. That is the uniqueness uh, and the beauty of the phase transition. Okay, these are the you know many of these things. This is the famous uh, pressure, uh, temperature density plane. So, this is the vapor, this is the liquid and this is the critical point and this is the coexistence. All across coexistence we get a phase transition. Uh, here we get condensation, here we get boiling okay. and this is the coexistence with liquid and crystal and here you get the phase transition. Lot of interesting things happen and lot of study going on now in the super could uh, super fluid, uh, super critical fluid and you also know this is a we asked in our interview and about 80 percent students cannot uh, uh, answer any of them. I have done uh, uh, statistics, 80 percent of the student cannot put, they are coming for doing PhD. Pressure versus temperature plane they cannot do. You can ask this question here, it is very interesting. They will put solid uh, here, liquid here and so it is a kind of a um, uh, Rubik's cube. Uh, uh, we make them do okay, but here is a first order phase transition, a liquid solid melting. Here sublimation is a first order phase transition. Gas liquid is a first order phase transition, but it is only here. It is the at the critical point nature of the transition changes. It becomes a second order phase transition, and that second order phase transition is like this. So these are uh, I've, I've drawn the Van der Waals loop also to uh, this Maxwell construction pressure versus density you have seen in your first year undergraduate. And in a first year undergraduate books there is a great great uh, section which is called law of corresponding states uh, that is done in a huge way. Now it is time for you to ask a question what is the law of corresponding states and why it is so unique. Absolutely. This is the our first in physical chemistry or physics the first, first A with the universality that I can P by PC, V by VC and T by TC and I get an equation from Van der Waals remember is on the right hand side 8 by 3 R uh, and you get that equation now describes everything. Suddenly you get a master car, you find pre, when you plot a pressure versus density everything is different. They, you cannot even plot them on the same uh, graph paper because density is so different, pressure is so different. But suddenly when I plot P by PC and uh, V by VC or Rho by Rho C, suddenly everything collapses, you get a master curve. Uh, when, when Van der Waals did that he of course knew and Van der Waals did enormous, I, as I mentioned once before that he is one of the underrated scientists, his huge amount of work he has done. So, uh, this law of corresponding states first told us that there is something very interesting, very fundamental going on. Uh, I do not have a, a slide on law of corresponding states, I should have had, but I forgot. Okay. Now, then order parameter is chosen physical quantity as it is 0 before the transition becomes non zero afterwards. So, if, uh, and it is that provided by liquid solid transition, a clear example that we will go to. But here I have said entropy versus temperature, this is the first order of phase transition. However, in a second order of phase transition, it is, of course, this is, but it is specific heat that diverges. All of us know that. Only there is only one truly second order of phase transition in RN phase sense, only one that we know, and that is the superconductivity. So, if entropy, entropy goes, there are lot of things on that because this has to be a positive because ds, dt is specific heat. Those are the things we will do a little bit. Then resistivity against temperature, this is the only is the superconductivity, but most of the second order phase transition that two we call two kinds of phase transition is a n phase sense other one where lambda transition in superfluidity fluidity 
So, you guys have seen that these figures teachers uh, they I think everywhere professors or whoever teach it or uh, uh, um, write books they are all excited about this uh, amazing thing that is here and this itself has given rise to huge amount of theories, understanding, papers, Nobel prizes is uh, and it, as I said is highly regarded. I, I happened to do my PhD uh, start after a few years after Kenneth Wilson's famous Renunciation book calculations and there is still so much excitement going on and Leo Katanov who started some of the things was at Brown and uh, Leon Cooper who did the superconductivity Cooper pair was at Brown. So, it was a lot of fun to seeing the people who created uh, physics around you. Mm. So, this is the example of a Ehrenfest first order phase transition, this one Ehrenfest first order phase transition, Ehrenfest second order phase transition, this we call continuous transition or Ehrenfest second order phase transition of the continuous type that the little bit uh, we do. Uh, as I said, some of the things will be elementary. I have to introduce people to the no, uh, nomenclature. Okay. Now, one thing, as I said, I always teach because this has come out from India, though the first one that by Karkut and Monroe in 1941, but this that was not successful for reasons I cannot go here. But the first successful theory of melting and uh, freezing was done by Ramakrishnan and Yusuf in 19 written paper written in 1977 came out in 1979 in physical review. What they did and I, I teach it because it is a wonderful example of outer parameter. So, this is the density of the solid which is inhomogeneous position dependent density. Liquid is homogeneous there is no position dependence that is average density is rho L. If you have read Kittel or any solid state physics books then the density of solid is written in an expansion where G is the reciprocal lattice vectors. So, when you do the x ray, you get reflection of these planes, these are the sharp peaks. However, they the solid will not show that unless this factor is in front. This is a phi g, this is the order parameter that becomes non zero when liquid becomes crystal. And Phi naught is the fractional density change between liquid and crystal. Like in when uh, I go to liquid to water twice, then this phi naught is negative. But most of the other cases, sodium and all other, uh, it, it, this is uh, our molecular liquids, this is positive because density increases. Phi naught and phi g are the one of the best examples of the order parameter. So, there are certain things given a parameter magnetization, uh, some other examples gas to liquid density as I said rho L minus rho G and liquid to crystal then phi naught and phi G and there is a bunch of them because you have a bunch of reciprocal lattice vectors in principle you need to take all of them, but in practice we find couple of them it describes the, the uh, theory uh, and they get very good agreement with it. this is one of the most successful theories of phase transition. It is actually also called Landau theory for reasons I will explain little bit. So, this is a very important slide where one gets examples of the order parameter. Now, I want to tell you and if you can tell me it will be even better why we give so much importance on order parameter. Hmm. So, this is again the same thing a phase time level by waste very very of the free energy uh, with classifying, but then first order phase transition continuous second order phase and true phase transition is superconducting transition is the true phase transition is exceedingly rare we know only one case ok. Uh, so, now some of the questions we need to ask as I said why and how why does a system undergo such a sharp change at a phase transition point what is the origin of discontinuity. Can we evaluate the transition parameters such as uh, these are the things I wrote to the morning uh, to make it really simple to uh, bring home the point. Now, I have to ask you a question like last question corresponding state was very good. Now, Koilas or somebody again tell me why we need order parameters. Well, one is of course the unification. 
uh, one is order uh, of a transition, uh, then uh, unity among diversity, all this beautiful stuff. But there is one technical reason why Landau made it or introduced it and made it so famous. There is a practical view. You know, the scientists are very pragmatic, practical people. Theoreticians are even more practical. They may, may go around with a hair, they are not practical, but theoreticians are often very practical people because we do what we can. Is access control parameter correct? But I am asking more. We know about the order function. We can constantly know the definition. Yeah, that is a practical side. I am saying theoretically, Lerner was a theoretician. He built this theory and he is the one who actually introduced all these things, uh, the order parameters and all these things. Okay. The reason is that we do all these things. The reason is that we need to have a theory. Now, let us think we need to have a theory and what do we really need for the theory? What is that this thing or what is the question? What is the question? The question is that it reaches here, it goes over to liquid or reaches 0 degree centigrade the water in your refrigerator becomes ice. And uh, so, when I ask why, what exactly is that question why means? Why means that there are certain characteristics in this branch, certain characteristics which manifest itself, which kind of initiates or motivates the transition, okay. One very simple answer you could give and I expect you to give. What is the thermodynamic answer? Why water becomes ice? Absolutely. So, free energy becomes minimum. So, if the free energy is the, like that, then that is the coexistence, but when free energy goes down, then this will be T below 0 degree centigrade and this will be ice and this will be liquid water. So, thermodynamic sense, we know the answer that it is the, it is the, uh, the free energy becomes low. And so, that was one of the first thing that people did know and people knew it I think even in 19th century or 20th century. So, this part is well understood that a phase transition takes place when the free energy the system finds that it is more profitable free energy wise to go over to the new phase, okay. That is a valid and good answer. Now, as I said here, why liquid sodium goes to BCC while argon goes to FCC? These are the kind of answer if I want to know, then I would be, I have to look at the characteristics here. characteristics here in this region that holds the key that it goes to BCC sodium. Similarly, here is a characteristic that tells you how big the jump will be at a given pressure from gas to liquid. How do I describe that now? Uh, okay, one of the thing is that I calculate the free energy here, I calculate the free energy there. Then I say, okay, I, um, I, I just, what we did there, we, we, we compare the free energy and uh, both will have minimum and then I, when this minimum goes down, then it, uh, system goes over to the, uh, this space. That as is a, is an explanation at a level which is a macroscopic level, but we want to know little bit more than that and we also want to know why the certain universal characteristics emerge in these kind of things and what allows us to calculate 
the transition parameters. Okay. So here certain things are there, we are not going to go too much into it. This is just what I said free energy stabilization. So free energy against an outer parameter x or can be it's like density or temperature. Then you here solid and melt, m is the melt. Uh, then this here this is uh, stable phase or s is stable and is metastable, is stable and that uh, lower free energy then at coexistence they are both same free energy both are stable but then uh, when you lower the temperature or increase the density then goes to the other things. And there are certain stability conditions of convexity and concavity which I do not think I will have time for that but basically once one says that if there is a maximum there if I draw a line between this minima and this minima then every point will lie above that chord. Okay. So, these kind of things are maxima and minima or if it is a minima here, I draw a curve line from here and there, then every point intervening is lies below that chord. So, that condition, simple condition is kind of stated here and that has certain consequences. And then the, uh, another is that the, for example, Gibbs potential is a concave function and that means specific it is positive. Concave function again means the compressibility is positive, there is a negative sign in front of it. So, uh, on the other hand, Helmholtz potential is a uh, uh, concave function of temperature and convex function of uh, volume which is given here. These are the slides, I leave with it and I will not have time to go through these details of that. But these are essentially fundamental things telling you stability of a system. But that does not fully answer the questions that I am after here.